Let him cook. Let him cook now. Let him cook. I said, let him cook. Hey guys, I'm Shwaib. Let's dive into my all new 2024 RAV4 Hybrid XLE. I've been cruising in this beauty for a month now, and let me tell you, it's been a smooth ride for the most part, but there are a few bumps worth noting. First up, we have the mechanical specs and performance. There's a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, which has a combined net horsepower from both the gas and electric motors of 219. It's not a sports car, so nothing crazy, but it's still a great upgrade from my last car, the 2010 RAV4, which had a horsepower of only 179. I've noticed a significant difference when it comes to making quick maneuvers on the highway in cases of speeding up to change lanes, so overall, the horsepower does the job for the fastest responses when you need a boost of speed. In addition to the horsepower, what also helps with quick responses to sudden changes in traffic is the Electronic Continuously Variable Transmission, or CVT for short, and Electronic On-Demand All-Wheel Drive. CVT helps with the seamless and efficient power delivery while maintaining a smooth ride. And the all-wheel drive just gets all the wheels moving simultaneously, which compared to my 2010 RAV4 is a great upgrade, which only had front-wheel drive. Like, it would take some time for the rear wheels to catch up at times. It would kind of spin in place and then catch up and go. And in that process, it would make a skirt or just a spin and circle noise. Moreover, the performance in terms of miles per gallon. On paper, the RAV4 Hybrid is set to get a combined miles per gallon of 39. You have 38 on the highway and 41 in the city. Personally, in my experience, for the past month, during my daily commutes to work, I've been getting around 41.5 miles per gallon, which is yet another major upgrade from my 2010 RAV4, which would only get like 25 miles per gallon. Moving on to the safety and convenience factors of the RAV4 Hybrid XLE, we have the latest standard Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, which comes with radar cruise control, pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, and automatic high beams, all of which come super handy on the road. Lane tracing assist kicks in and helps you stay within the lane, and I use this every day during my commute to work. It's like a 30 minute commute. I'm mostly on the leftmost lane, going about the same speed for the most part and so that helps if if i accidentally move to one side or the other side of the lane or if i'm driving slightly on the lines it will kick in and put me within the lane in addition the radar cruise control alerts come super helpful when changing lanes you can like be extra confident that there is no car in the way you can confidently change lanes the car has eight airbags as part of the star safety system unlike my 2010 rav4 the 2024 rav4 has a backup camera with dynamic grid lines and they're extremely helpful. I used to always be hesitant to reverse park, like worried that I might accidentally hit something that I couldn't see in the side mirrors. Now I can confidently reverse park knowing exactly what's behind my car. But I do want to mention that it did take some time for me to get used to the backup camera and the grid lines, like kind of understanding the distance relative to the lines showing in the camera, like how far they are from the edge or from the end of the parking space. But after using it for some time now, I have a good idea of the distance based on which zone of the grid I park in. So I'm pretty much always using the rear camera now whenever I'm parking. In addition, there's also a blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert, which also is great when you reverse parking in or out of a parking space. If someone's waiting for you or someone's passing you, it will alert you which direction they're coming in. So that's also another great safety feature which can prevent accidents. All in all, when it comes to safety and convenience, I feel a lot safer in the 2024 RAV4 than I did in my 2010 RAV4. All of the latest safety features give me extra confidence when I'm driving, knowing that I'm making the right moves when it comes to changing lanes, reverse parking, and just driving in general. So it's safe and super convenient. All right, let's take a closer look at the exteriors. The overall design ensures functionality and aesthetics. First off, I love the ice cap color, basically white, but they call it ice cap and it's very slick and clean, like I can eat off of this. Although it does get dirty and whatever gets on it is more visible because of the color, it's nothing a microfiber and just water can't wipe off, so it's not been a problem for me at all. Moving on to the shape and overall silhouette of the car, it's somewhat boxy, but definitely manages to still have a slick appeal like I mentioned before. And all of that is thanks to the aerodynamic enhancements, which is very noticeable when you're looking from the windshield to the roof line. There's there's a subtle curve which enhances the overall efficiency. On the front we have the LED projector lights and the LED daytime lights and these are great for visibility and really add a modern touch. Like just look at this, it's a very modern looking design 
and so I do like that touch. In addition, I like the 17 inch silver alloy wheels, which look super clean and also adds a nice sporty appeal. And that's very visible from the side profiles. Like I think it looks pretty slick as well. Lastly on the exteriors, I want to mention the height adjustable power gate, which makes it easy for loading and unloading. And on top of that, we have the roof racks right above the moon roof. It is worth noting that the roof racks have a weight limit of 160 pounds. Personally, I will probably never use this, but I do like the look it adds to the overall color. Like the mix of white and black tends to pop and the roof racks enhances the overall look. I just want to add compared to my 2010 RAV4, which did not have adjustable power gates or anything like that, I really like the power gate. You can just press a button and then it will go up or I can just press the button on the physical key itself or there's a button on the inside that I can also press, which I will show you guys later. But in short, the exteriors have a modern aesthetic and fairly convenient functionalities as well. For example, the power lift gate, the LED projector headlights, which have an option on the inside to set to auto. So they will turn on when it is really dark and whatnot, like automatically. It'll turn on and off, which we'll get into farther when we look into the interiors. For the interiors, which are a huge upgrade for me coming from the 2010 RAV4, Starting off with the power driver's seat, which is super nice. In my 2010 RAV4, you would have to manually move it and adjust it. I mean, it was fine. It did the job, but it did make it really hard to do it. Like, let's say I'm driving and I don't like the fit or the adjustment of the seat. It made it really hard to adjust it while driving. Because for the most part, I would not feel safe doing that because I'm driving. Like, some movements you would make may make it harder to drive or you may accidentally move the wheel the wrong way. So I would not feel safe adjusting it. But now with the power driver's seat, I can easily adjust it. Like, if I want to move myself slightly forward, if I want to move myself slightly back or up and down, I can easily do that with the buttons available in the current position while I'm driving and it's not a hazard or anything like that like it's very seamless moreover regarding the seats overall I just have the standard fabric seats I did not really want the leather or anything like that I didn't really want to add too many packages to the vehicle I just wanted the standard package so you get the standard fabric seats which are nice but I do see them perhaps getting dirty in the long run I have been thinking about getting seat covers but we'll see if I actually get them uh, moreover we have a smart key system and push button start so you don't actually need to physically put your keys in the car to start it like I did in my 2010 RAV4. The push start button is also another upgrade for me. It makes it really convenient. You just put your keys wherever in the car and it will just, you just push the button and start. And that's really nice and neat. I tend to usually just leave my keys in my pockets so I don't ever like forget it in the car. So I always just keep it in my pocket. So when I'm in the car, the car notices and I can start it. And when I'm out of the car, I have my keys. Moving on, there's plenty of space. You have the bottle holders and then you have storage room for just usual car stuff and then you have a lot of space in the cargo area that's one thing i really liked about the rev4 it's just the space that's available the storage space because it allows me to have a lot of stuff if i ever want to go on a trip or something i can take my stuff within my car in a single ride or if i'm moving that's super helpful so that's another thing i remember when i initially got the 2010 rev4 because of that like I was still living in a college dorm and I just wanted to take everything in one ride to take it back home and I wanted a big enough car so SUV made sense for that. You have the same amount of cargo as you do in the 2010 if not even slightly more especially when you put the back seats down you get a lot more space so i think the cargo does a great job and it's and it really goes above and beyond i've never had any complaints about the cargo it does the job it's great if you ever want to make a trip to the ikea and transport furnitures and anything like that that's all good and the cargo definitely does the job in addition to the cargo i do like the fact that the standard package included all the weather floor liners and cargo trays Additionally, in the interiors, we have a power tilt and slide moonroof, and that's super cool. Like my 2010 RAV4 didn't have anything like that, and I like having the moonroof. It just adds more light to the car, so like, especially on a summer day, you can just kind of have the moonroof open and just get fresh air. Overall, the car has a lot of physical buttons, which is something I really like, because I know nowadays more modern cars are kind of moving towards buttons on the screen and whatnot, like to control the fans and stuff like that. So I like the fact that the Toyota is still keeping with these physical buttons because it makes it a lot easy while you're driving. You can easily turn on the fan or adjust something. You don't need to be precise or accurate on where exactly you're pressing and stuff like that. You just need to press the button and it does the job. Like I remember when I test drove the Tesla Model Y, they had a lot of the features and controls on the screen. 
And I didn't really like that while driving. Like it felt distracting to me. Like if you accidentally missed a spot, you might have to touch it again. And that's kind of distracting you from driving. So overall, physical buttons are definitely a plus for me. And I do like the fact that they have a lot of physical buttons and they all do the job. Moreover, there are five USB ports. There's one in the front, there's two in the storage area, and then there's two in the back for the back passengers to charge their devices. The ones in the storage and the ones in the back are USB type C. The one in the front is a USB type A. And for the most part, they all do the job. And it's nice that everyone in the car gets their own charging port. In addition to the physical buttons, one thing I would like to note is that there are a lot of blank buttons. So these are for if you got additional packages and additional features. Like I know one of the buttons that you can add with one of the packages is the bird eye view button, which would be nice to have on the standard. I don't know why they don't come with the standard package, but since I didn't get that additional package, I just have a blank button. And personally, I'm not a big fan of that. Like, why can't they just take them out completely and just like shorten how many buttons they have here? But I do get it. Like they're trying to like advertise the fact that they have more functionalities and better packages where you can get other features. Personally, I do wish they had the bird eye view as a standard package and it came with it because it just adds more safety to the overall car since you can see exactly what where you're parking and what's around you but that's one thing i don't like that they have empty buttons that don't do anything and like that's kind of unnecessary in short the interior is a big upgrade for me from the 2010 rav4 it's just much cleaner and more modern i do really like the seats especially the driver's seat having that power driver's seat is very helpful being able to adjust whenever you want to make it more fitting and feel comfortable while driving. I do want to note that only the driver's seat has the power controls. All the other seats have manual controls. I'm a big fan of the interiors overall. It's a huge upgrade for me compared to the 2010 RAV4. And continuing to talk about the interiors, I just love the infotainment system. So one of the big reasons why I wanted to upgrade to the latest car from the 2010 RAV4 is the fact that the 2010 RAV4 did not have any backup camera, Bluetooth, or Android Auto, or anything like that. Like, it's a pretty old car. Although I did have an aux cable and I can connect to my phone for music. And nowadays, a lot of the phones don't even have headphone jacks. So eventually it didn't quite work for me. So I ended up getting a Bluetooth adapter, which eventually worked fine. But it was still giving me trouble in terms of like mounting my phone for GPS. Like I've bought multiple mounts throughout the years and they would all end up falling off while I'm driving in the middle of a commute or something. And now I don't know where to go. So stuff like that. And that was always annoying. So having an infotainment system that comes with both CarPlay and Android Auto has been a big upgrade for me. I could just put my phone on the tray and Android Auto wirelessly connects and that's super convenient. So I can have Google Maps on one side and my music on the other side and go about my ride. In addition to that, the infotainment system is the same window or the display for the backup camera which is a major upgrade especially when you reverse park and that's super handy like i've mentioned earlier you can see it in the infotainment display and it's super responsive there's no lag or anything like that the touch response for instance feel like i'm using a smartphone the display shows the backup camera and i can adjust the views and i can do the standard view or a wider view and like I mentioned before, I do wish they had the bird eye view. So if I got the bird eye view feature, that would also show on the same display. But moving on to more of the infotainment system and overall car, I really like some of the controls of the infotainment systems like voice assistant works great. If I want to change the song or navigate to a different address or destination, I can just say, hey, Google, and then change my address. Be like, hey, Google, navigate home or hey, Google, navigate to work. And that all works great and comes super handy. Like I'm in the middle of a commute and maybe I just want to change directions or maybe I want to ask what the weather is like today. I can just do that hands-free. Having Google Assistant available with the voice commands is definitely a plus and I use that all the time. In addition to that, they have a lot of controls on the steering wheel which help you control the entertainment system as well. Like you can skip the song or activate voice assistant and stuff like that. So that's all super convenient. And they do have dedicated mics right above the driver's seat and the passenger seat. So both of those people can control the entertainment system with their voice. So I do like that added feature. It makes it super safe, hands-free control. So you don't have to actually physically touch the screen at all. 
you just use your voice to do a lot of the common tasks that you do while driving, like skipping the song or changing the direction. One last thing I do want to add, without Android Auto or CarPlay, the default software isn't as good. And in order to get the navigation or music, you have to sign up for extra subscriptions. So I don't really like the default settings at all. The only times I've used it is when I need to access the settings for things like connecting to Bluetooth or one of the neat features I like is how you can see the battery percentage of the hybrid battery. And that's nice. And it has a nice graphic showing how much the rear battery is charged. So I do use that from time to time. But other than that, like 99% of the time, I'm on Android Auto and that does the job and I'm pretty satisfied with that. So I'm always using Android Auto. Moving on to the smartphone app, one of the cool features with the car is that you can control the car or just check the status using a smartphone app. You can turn on the engine while you're in the house or you can lock the doors or just check the status like if you accidentally forgot and left a window open or left a door open. It's really cool and they are super useful information and it's handy at times because let's say I just want to quickly get into my car and I left my keys in the house but I have my phone with me. I can unlock the car with my phone and get in the car real quick and that's all nice. And I have been using it, I'm kind of getting used to it but I realize all these features are under the remote control feature and it's all going to go away. They're all, it's only available for a year so up till like April 17, 2025. So you only get it for free for a year and then after that, you have to pay a subscription to continue this. And personally, I'm not a big fan of that at all. Like it's 2024, I feel like these features should come free with the car. Why is this a subscription based thing? It doesn't quite make sense to me. I mean, I get it, they're trying to make more money, but I feel like this is something that should come standard. Like this is a 38, you know, almost 40K price point for a car and these features, these minor features, you have to add an additional subscription. So I'm not a big fan of that. So that's something I'm super disappointed about because I really do like the feature and they are very handy and super helpful at times. But these are all trial services. So honestly, I don't mind not having them, but they are a nice thing to have. So after the trial period, I'm probably never going to use it because I'm kind of used to it with my 2010 RAV4. I didn't have any of these features and I was fine with it. So I'm sure I'll be fine going forward as well. But it just sucks that they have these cool features, but the only way to keep it is to pay a subscription. And it's not like a dollar a month or something. It's, it's like $15 a month. And that's just unacceptable for me. Like, I don't think these features are worth $15 a month subscription for that. But going forward, I would like Toyota to make these features free or at least give it for a longer time. But honestly, they should just be free. Like they should come standard with the car. It should just be a modern feature that comes with the car. So Toyota definitely make this free going forward because I think subscription is just very unacceptable. But overall, the smartphone app is nice. So if you do get the subscription, you can keep these features for longer. But the standard, what comes with the car is you get it for a year. And then after that, you would ha in order to have access, you need to add subscription to continue. So when it comes to the pros, I really like the color. The ice cap color just looks amazing. It's very modern, slick, clean, and personally, I'm a big fan. The miles per gallon is also really good compared to my 2010 RAV4. It's a big upgrade for me. So on paper, overall combined miles per gallon, you get 39, 38 on the highway, 41 in the city. And in my experience, in my personal experience while commuting to work, and after a thousand miles, I've been getting 41.5 miles per gallon which is a huge upgrade compared to my 2010 RAV4, which only had like 25 miles per gallon. So that's another pro. So I do like that I don't have to get gas as often as I did before. And the fact that it's a hybrid, it does get an extra 10 miles with the battery. And I think that's all nice. And I'm hoping the longevity of it is also good. So I do like the fact that I have a rechargeable battery and that's a plus definitely a pro and I hope it's reliable in the long run. Like I want this car to last 10 to 15 years before I have to swap the battery or something like that, but I have just got it and only time will tell about the battery. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Like it does the job for the most part, you know, it's doing the job right now. So I think, I think that's, that's fine. Moreover, the fact that it's a Toyota and a modern Toyota is a plus because Toyota parts are a lot more available than other cars, which makes repairs cheaper going forward. So if anything happens to the car, I can fix it up for cheaper compared to other cars. And in the end, 
this did lower my car entrance so that was a plus for me when i added the new car it lowered my car entrance by like 60 bucks and i think that's a nice plus as well furthermore another pro is that i overall feel like the price is fairly reasonable depending on the package you get so depending on the package you get you are looking somewhere between 33k to 45k and mine was 34k and that's for the xle standard package and then on top of that you have the tax and everything so overall with everything mine came out to be 38k but with all the features and everything that comes with the car i think that's a fairly priced car for a modern 2024 rav4 hybrid and that's definitely a pro all in all there's plenty to like about this car there's great cargo space i love the infotainment system and the overall upgrade in technology the power seats and all of that is a plus and it's been a huge upgrade for me for my 2010 rav4 on the other side though in terms of the cons there are certain things i wish that were more permanent like the remote connect application which is only going to be available for a year and then I'll have to pay if I want to continue using it. So that's something I don't like. In addition, I don't like the blank buttons. Like why do they have these buttons if the car doesn't have the feature? Like either take the buttons out or just give me the feature in the standard package. That's something I don't like. So I really wish it came with a lot more features in the standard package, such as bird eye view, heated steering wheels and stuff like that. Like just fewer blank buttons in general would have been nice. And speaking of the bird eye view, I do feel like it adds an extra layer of safety when you're parking. So it would have been nice if it had come with the standard XLE package, but unfortunately it does not. So that's definitely a con. Personally, for my 30 minute commute to work, the 39 miles per gallon combined or the 41 which i actually get in my use it's i don't think it cuts it i still end up filling up my tank like every week or or a week and a half but that's a minor inconvenient for me for the time being i think it's still a great car and it still has a great miles per gallon especially coming from the 2010 rav4 it's still a major upgrade for me so that's kind of a neutral so overall there are a few cons and there is definitely a lot more to like about this car than not but there are a few things that are still worth noting if you are considering buying this car in conclusion i highly recommend the 2024 rav4 hybrid xle it's a great suv perfect for family and perhaps one of the best suvs to date offering a blend of modern features impressive fuel efficiency and reliable performance the pros including the slick ice cap color excellent miles per gallon advanced safety features and convenient technology like the infotainment system and power driver seat make it a standout choice additionally the spacious cargo area and overall modern design are significant upgrades from older models while there are some cons such as limited availability of certain features without additional packages and the subscription-based remote connect app overall the 2024 rav4 hybrid xle is a well-rounded and practical vehicle that delivers both comfort and functionality making an ideal choice for family and personally for me it's been a great upgrade for my 2010 rav4 I love the backup camera, I love all the convenient safety features, and the overall package is super nice, especially with the infotainment system of using Android Auto. It's been super convenient being able to see the map and listen to my music and also navigate my music with all the steering controls. So all in all, it's a full package and I absolutely love the new car. Well, that is it for today, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell icon, and as always, have a superb day and thanks for watching.